Hi, right, welcome back to Shaving with Fuzzy. I'm Fuzzy. How y'all for another take on this one? Because uh, Miss Luna had uh, eased into the bathroom without me knowing it, and I took a step and I kind of stepped on her paw, and I feel bad about that. But she's not hurt. Don't worry. She just squealed, and uh, she'll learn not to get under my feet anymore. But anyway, so back to this Thursday afternoon, and uh, working a night shift tonight because we're still short a little bit of supervisors. So uh, I'm working some night shifts to cover a shift, which is uh, you know fine with me. It always fine with me. I'm, I like working nights. So uh, anyway, on to today's shave, because it's going to be a little bit interesting in a couple of ways. To me, anyway. I don't know if you'll find it interesting, but hey, there you go. So we uh, got our uh, French Market coffee going here. It's a dark roast with chicory. And you'll notice I'm drinking it in my uh, mug that came from Canada, or cup that came from Canada, however you want to look at it, from my nutty buddy Patrick up there. And if you remember, he made me two uh, brush handles. I put the uh, flat top Franks uh, not in one of them and I set it bad. It needs to be set deeper. It's set too high and I'm gonna have to redo that one one of these days But this is what the second one's gonna look like. I got the knot glued in. It's not set up. It's not ready to go It will be in a video here soon. Look at that. It's not not beautiful That is a Maggard's 26 millimeter mixed knot. It's got uh, badger and boar never used one heard good things about them And uh, the first thing we're going to use it on is either vintage Colgate or Williams. I'm not sure right now I've also got vintage uh, Old Spice. I got vintage uh, Burner Shave. Who knows? But it's going to be a vintage soap to start with. Yeah, probably Williams. You know how that goes. So anyway, interesting little texture. But we'll have more on that brush as it sets up and we go to use it. For today's shave, so what we're going to do, somebody mentioned the other day using modern Williams and making their own shave stick. I've done it. This is what's left of it. You just grate it down, and I used a medicine bottle. I packed it into a medicine bottle, and you add a little water as you go, and you pack it, and you add, and you pack it, and you let it sit up, and it hardens, and it comes out to be a shave stick. Now, you don't have to do that. You can take just a regular old cake of Williams, and you kind of wet it, and you rub it on your face. It works. You can even do it from the side. You don't got to do it flat. Do it from the side. You rub it. But it works just like a shave stick, and it works fine. It's great. Trust me on this. So if you want to do that, do that. So for a razor, somebody mentioned the VC4 the other day, and Fuzzy's kind of lazy today. You know, it happens sometimes. It probably happens a lot of times. So anyway, I didn't go dig up the VC4, which was known as the, uh, has a runner guard on it and everything. It's a beautiful razor. I do have one. It shaves great. Uh, I didn't go dig that up. What I did dig up was this one. Now, also, I don't remember the model on this. Believe it or not, Fuzzy doesn't remember all this stuff all the time. I have to go look stuff up and this, that, and the other, but... Anyway, this is the model that the blade just slides in. So to use a modern gym blade, you just have to trim the ears off of it and take the spine off and trim the ears. Uh, what does that mean, you say? Let me help you out with that. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to, right here in front of the camera, on camera, on video, I don't edit anything. Everything's the way it happens. Uh, we're going to try to take the spine off a gym carbon blade. This is actually a treat carbon steel blade. It's got a couple of shaves on it. Yeah, it's got a few spots on it, but they don't get down into the blade, and it's going to be just fine, I promise. Careful when you're using an open blade like this, because they do cut. Promise me, there's no doubt in that. That is not fiction. That is not fake news. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our handy little needle nose pliers here, and we're going to pinch the back of the spine, and we're going to give it a little bit, and all you got to do is just give it a little bit of a twist, backwards and forwards, and usually that spine pulls right off. Of course, now that I'm doing this on video, it wants to be a pain in the tail. But anyway, give it a good pull, and there the spine comes right off. Now, what you have to do to get this to fit is you have to get these outer corners off on both ends. Normally, and like I said, with it being on video, it's probably not going to want to work, but normally you can snap them off with just a regular pair of pliers, and all you're trying to do is snap that edge off, just like that. And, uh, you know... People are going to holler, you should be wearing eye protection, and those people are right. But anyway, we'll, we'll play with, uh, you know, we'll play with fire today. So just bend the, bend the tips off, and they break off. Now, don't worry about being too neat about it. This one ends up being lopsided. Not a huge deal, because when you slide them into the razor, uh, and again, watch your fingers, because this will, this will bite. Let me get it all around where we can see what's going on. When you slide it into the razor here, you can adjust the uh it slides down in and then you can adjust it to center it into the blade stops it's, it's just slides and it adjusts and there's nothing to it now if you'll give me half a second here i'm gonna put a pair of eyeballs on so that i can see what i'm doing better up close because fuzzy's in that club so anyway you get it in 
and you fold it forward so that it's kind of up against the stops there. And when you bring the lever down in the back here, it pushes the blade up and that's how it locks the blade in. These are some really, 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 and then what you do is you just ease the pressure off a little bit and you adjust it until you get it nice and centered, just like that. Now, again, this is also an open comb raider, so we're still October, OC-tober for the open combs, so this falls into that category too. But it's got these neat little steampunk gears and stuff on it. These are really, really, really neat little razors, and there are some models that won't use the uh, modified gem blade. You actually have to have blades. Uh, Japan uh, Feather in Japan still makes blades for these. You can still get the blades. They have a cutout that will work. I think there's one model maybe. Somebody uh, help me out here. Ron R. usually comes along and helps me out on this stuff. Ron or anybody else that knows. Uh, there's one model, I think, that will not take the modern uh, feather blade to, to punch out something the wrong for it or something. I don't know. I've never had that model. Everything I've ever had, I've been able to use one of the two blades in, which is really neat because they're really neat razors. They're very efficient. They, uh, you know, they're not aggressive monsters like some people would make them out to be. Uh, of course, for some people who don't understand the word technique, anything that is efficient is a monster. And therefore, they usually get cut. Something important to remember, uh, not only uh, in life, but also in shaving, is that a lot of times your attitude is what controls your circumstances. Your circumstances do not always control your attitude. So if your attitude is, this is a monster, and I'm probably going to cut myself, and I'm going to be real ginger with it, and I'm going to be careful, it's going to be, oops, I just cut myself. In shaving, as in with life, it's generally fortune favors the bold. So uh, if you're sitting there and you're hesitantly hacking away at your face with a razor because you're scared of the dang thing, you're probably going to cut yourself. And that also holds through with uh, you know other things in life as well. It's one of my favorite sayings is that your attitude generally controls your circumstances, not the other way around. I had to explain that to somebody today, as a matter of fact. Well, I didn't have to, but I felt the need to. So anyway, there you go. So that's what we're doing today, and we're just gonna use our uh, Smog 1305 as our uh, brush for the day. Now, get around and you know, how much soap do you rub on your face with a shave stick? That's a pretty common question, and there's really no good answer to it. You learn as you go. If you uh, start to shave and you start to build your lather and you don't have enough, well, you need to put more on. If uh, you start and you got lather flying all over the place, next time you do it, don't use so much. There's not always a quick and easy, simple answer. Sometimes you have to live it to see how it goes. And this stick is getting extremely short, so it's getting kind of hard to hold. But that's okay. Now, if you're going to make one of these, don't just buy one cake of uh, Williams to make it because you end up with a very small stick. Go ahead and get you two or three. Get you a decent sized medicine bottle or anything. It doesn't have to be a medicine bottle. I saw a guy that took a, a round piece of PVC pipe, little, you know, whatever diameter you wanted. And he did that and then he put a uh, cap on the bottom of it. And he had a wooden dial that would fit into it. And that's how he built his shave sticks. And uh, you put some in and then pack it with the dial and put some in, put a little water in, pack it with the dial, and he'd keep that till it was full. Now, he said, and I found that it did help, that if you take the mold after you packed everything in it, let it sit a while so it gets harder, put it in the freezer, let it get cold, it'll pull away from the uh, edge and it's easier. Now, he left the cap where he could pull that cap off, and then he'd take the dial and he'd push it out. And as long as it's set good, I think that would work just fine. I don't see any problems with that at all. Mine I had actually lined with some plastic wrap and then when after I let it sit I put it in the freezer and it contracted a little bit I just pulled the plastic wrap and the whole thing came out. The downside of that was the plastic wrap there was no way for me to keep it smooth around the sides so the sides of the shave stick were all funky looking like it had weathered you know in the North Sea storms for a millennium. But that all smoothed out over time and everything's great. So anyway, let's see how our modern Williams, this is modern Williams. Now I do have the vintage Williams shave stick, but this is actually a homemade modern Williams shave stick. And of course, you can't lather Williams. It's the worst stuff in the world. It's the cheapest stuff in the world. It's horrible, you can't lather it. It doesn't work. And anyone who uses it is just, you know, slap camel crazy. Well, you gotta be crazy to slap a camel, right? I don't know. 
I've just always heard that saying. When I was in the casino business at one of the casinos I worked at, I was there about eight years. And uh, there was actually, I may have told this story before, but y'all know me, I tell stories more than once because I forget the stories I've told. So anyway, there was actually a piece of paper up on a bulletin board, a, chalk, a cork board, that was fuzzyisms and Calvinisms to them. And every time I had a little Calvinism, they'd go and I'd use it and they'd go stick it on the board. And uh, there were quite a few of them up there by the time I left that casino and went to a different casino. All right, looky there. We actually got a lather out of the modern William Shave Stick. Isn't that just the most amazing thing? If it didn't work, I wouldn't use it. I mean, why put the boat in the water if you're not going to row it to China? If it don't work, I wouldn't use it, but uh, it works. All right, so there's no secret story on how to use one of these razors. The big deal is, though, be sure the blade is centered, it's all behind the stops, and that it stays tight with the thumb thingy there. And uh, cause if it's not, if it gets loose, then it's just flopping around, and uh, that's not good eats at all. All right. It is a very smooth shave. It is a very efficient shave. There is nothing monstrous about an auto strop. Now, this is a valet auto strop. That is uh, a little different from just the auto strop. The valet auto strops came later. The first of them were just auto strop. And then after, uh, there's a story there, and it became part of Gillette. I guess the guy that had, had uh, invented them, the auto strop, ended up working at Gillette, and then it became the valet auto strop. And they're still great razors. I do have a couple of the original auto strops, and they're just absolutely awesome razors. Uh, the ones I have are, uh, are uh, silver plated, and they're just, uh, they're really awesome. They're, they're, they're beautiful razors and they shave like nothing you've ever seen, and they're just awesome. All right, boy, I tell you what, this thing looks really mild, and it, it just, like I said, it's not a monster, but you talk about gets the lather off. It definitely, without a doubt, dead. We're going to go back over and get that. All righty. Then we're going to trim up around the goatee. Because Williams has plenty of residual slickness. And, uh, while we're, we'll turn it. all right, there we go. Now let's see if we got enough uh, left in the brush here for a second round. I bet we do. On your second round, remember, I mean, you're not looking for butter, cr uh, butter uh, cream to start with. But they don't do butter cream unless it's icing a cake. And I don't ice very many cakes. But uh, on your second round, if your lather is even thinner, now by thinner, I mean not as thick. I don't mean thinner is not as, uh, you know, not as substantial a lather, uh, just not as thick a layer. It won't hurt anything. Here we go. Run it down fairly flat. Beautiful shave. And we're going to come across here at an angle. And I do use short strokes, but like I'm saying, if you're timid and you're using and you're scared of the razor and you're using those little old choppy strokes, that's when you end up looking like you've been in a fight with a, uh, you know, a really mad cat. I don't know if you've ever been around a really mad cat. True story. Uh, when I moved back from Arizona, I moved in with my brother and my nephews for a while. And uh, they had a cat. Whiskers, I think they called that beast. And she would go out of her way to walk over and take a swing at me with those claws. I never did anything to that cat. Seriously, I didn't. And uh, she would be walking by and just walk by the living room door and I'd be on the couch watching TV. She'd come over, jump up on the couch and walk over just to take a swipe at me. My brother can tell you that's a true story. But uh, I never figured that out about that cat. Never did anything to it. I was always friendly to it. I fed it. I'd rub her belly. Whatever. She didn't like me. That's all right. Not everybody or everything is going to like you no matter what you do. And I don't think that's such a bad thing. 
I've actually gone out of my way to be sure that certain people didn't like me, so I didn't have to put up with them because they didn't want to be around. If they didn't like me and they didn't come around, I didn't have to make an excuse not to go around them. So, anyhow, because you don't like people. Check that out, though. You talk about a nice shave. We've been sitting here rattling on, and we done come up with a nice shave, as they say where I come from. All right, well, let's put a little bit of this here, witch hazel on. All right, there we go. And we're going to come up and do our normal little, normal little touch up here. Down under here like we always do. And up here. And that's going to be our valet auto strot shave. So it's an SC shave. It's a really cool SC shave. It's an open comb shave. It's a modern Williams shave. So to finish that up, I thought I'd do a little something I don't always do. I've got a bottle of a really nice aftershave that came from England. And I don't remember what part of England this was bought in, but uh, it's Pashana, if I'm correct, pronouncing it correctly, original aftershave. This stuff is nice. I don't wear it very often because I'm trying to stretch it as long as I can, although I don't think it would be hard to replace. But, uh, and it doesn't take a whole lot of it, and it smells really good, and it's nice and refreshing. And there we go. So that's our shave for today, boys and gals. Appreciate the three or four of you that watch the videos and comment. Good seeing a couple people who haven't commented in a while come back through and comment. Always fun when that happens. If the video just stopped, it's not my fault, uh, but I don't think it did. I think it kept recording. So anyway, there we go. That's what we're doing for today. Y'all have a great day out there. Whoever you are, whatever you are, whatever you're doing, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, happy shaves to you.